Good evening and welcome to NUFC Matters. It's ladies' night, a pre-record. My apologies because I am uh, otherwise engaged and I couldn't do a live show. Um, but uh, always plenty to talk about with regards to Newcastle United. Also apologies if uh, signings have been made uh, in this last 24 hours and um, we're talking about them in the past tense or as if they haven't been done. Again, that's just the, uh, the nightmare when you pre-record shows. But um, Sav, let's uh, crack straight on and talk a little bit about um, the pre-season. Uh, just want to know what your, your feeling is after you know the Middlesbrough game. Obviously, we lost 5-1, a game which uh, you know we all saw the... The low lights, not the highlights too. Uh, Jamal Lascelles, of course, getting sent off, but conceding five against the Neil Warnock team is almost unheard of. And then, you know, essentially following that up with a, a home game against uh, Stoke, obviously another defeat. Um, injury ravaged team, it has to be said. But uh, you know, pre-season games, do you do you put much into those? Do, do do you feel like it's just blowing the cobwebs out? Or are you a bit concerned going into the season? Well, even if it's just blowing the cobwebs out, it's still a little bit concerning. I mean, 5-1 to Middlesbrough. I mean, probably the highlight of that match was the LaSalle's fight, which I still haven't seen. Um, and then, obviously, losing 1-0 again yesterday. I would say that is a little bit concerning with the t the squad as it currently is. I mean, you know, it's sub subject to change, obviously, with things that are coming up. Um, but as it is, it's not good enough, in my opinion. No, I mean, the, you know, the defeat against Middlesbrough as well, it, it hurts that little bit more because, you know, we haven't played them for a long time competitively, but they're local rivals, aren't they? Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, and it's losing 1-2-0 and there's been, you know, completely hammered 5-1. It's, it's embarrassing. Yeah, I did see, I did see on uh, the show at the weekend that um, you know Bruce has got form for losing derbies five one, and I, I certainly preferred it when we were on the other side of that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, the the injuries as well. I mean, you know, they seem to be mounting as well. You know, that that that's a bit of a concern. It's something which we talked about last season with um, with regards to maybe you know Steve Bruce against Rafa it was one of those comparisons. You know, is he doing something differently? Is it the conditioning? You know, what what's exactly going wrong? You know that that creates all these injuries. You know, is it, you know, not not great going into a new season, is it? When you've got players dropping like flies. No, I know. And do you know what I find really random is that one of the people that isn't injured is actually Andy Carroll, who's always <laughs> injured. So, <laughs> that's, um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, are they slipping over in those Sports Direct paddling pools as they're getting out and hurting themselves? I don't know. It's just it's there is there's loads of injuries, and to be honest, it is something that you know is quite concerning. Yeah. Kendall, it's uh, been a, a tough couple of weeks being a Newcastle fan watching these pre-season games, um, you know, and, and, and getting, you know, getting the rundown from the journalists, etc. on them. It, 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 it hasn't been good, has it? No, it's been tough, especially when you can't watch them. There's no streams. And I mean, the other day when we got beat by Middlesbrough, there was just nothing said. It was just like, oh, we were beaten today at, Middle, like, at Middlesbrough. And I was thinking by how much like how bad was it they didn't even want to say it was 5-1 and like, that's how bad it was and there was just there's been barely any highlights there's been nothing to go off and um, apart from obviously the first game there was a couple of highlights but other than that it's been really difficult because you obviously can't make a judgment based on what you've seen or anything like that because we haven't seen anything so it has been very very tough just to be like sort of even further back than the sidelines yeah, big concerns, I suppose, again, over the fact that, you know, we didn't seem to have anybody to put the ball in the back of the net, but but also, you know, leaking goals. You know, we all knew that losing Dubravka was going to be an issue. Um, Darlow hasn't exactly got off to the best start, or Gillespie. No, and that's the obvious concern, because as we know, we don't know massively how long for defin like definitively how long Dubravka is going to be out so obviously it's nerve-wracking going into the season when it's you know starts next <laughs> next week again how like badly off we're going to be Um, obviously we rely on our defence and our goalkeepers a lot so to lose 5-1 to Middlesbrough was obviously not a good look especially when they were practically battling relegation last season so and like Stoke as well so it just doesn't look good for us and it looks very, very concerning, um, obviously, with the season just a week away now. Samantha, the concern that I had was that some of the players just seem to be, you know, taking it as a bit of a joke against uh, against Middlesbrough. It's a local derby. There's, there's, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, a, a friendly uh, behind closed doors, whether it's, you know, a game of 
tiddlywinks. It, it, it's, a, it's against your local rivals and you need to be, you know, you need to be focused and taking it seriously. But it seemed to me that there was, you know, that was some of the reports that there was players laughing about the result and, you know, shrugging and patting each other on the back. I, I, I didn't understand that. I think that's what you get with a manager like Steve Bruce. I mean, that wouldn't have happened after Rafa, under Rafa. I mean, he was meticulous. He would not have stood for that. Sometimes, you know, he was maybe a little more cold than he should have been. But it's a, a local derby. There should be rivalry. We had so many players out injured. The goals were an absolute shambles. I mean, it wasn't, it didn't look good. And Steve Bruce didn't even come out and, and talk about that game afterwards, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and that fills me with concern going into the season that, you know, this, the fringe players have always been a problem for the team. They don't seem to be able to come in and step up, but you expect attitude at least. And that was lacking apart from our captain, you know, having a scuffle with someone and getting sent off, which is silly. He lost another pre-season match. Yesterday wasn't good. Defensively, a mess. Um, and, I, you know, things like that. When when you're lacking that little bit of quality in the team, you at least need to be able to apply yourself properly. And that didn't reflect well. And I think the fans have a right to be concerned and frustrated if, you know, they saw it as a bit of a jolly. Yes, pre-season's for fitness. But you're also, you know, playing for your team and trying to stick a position in the starting eleven. Um, or the starting squad against West Ham. And if you apply yourself like that, I wouldn't want to put them in the team. It's interesting you point out that Steve Bruce didn't want to talk or didn't talk after the Middlesbrough game, but there was also um, you know, no media access for the, uh, for the game at home against Stoke City, which, which I found rather odd. Um, you know, why, why, was, why was the manager not, you know, not available for comment you know, after that game? And you know, you were left after the Middlesbrough game with a rather embarrassing scenario of Neil Warnock coming out and telling us more about what was going on at Newcastle United than anybody at the club. Yeah, I mean, communication as a whole is so poor at the minute. You're kind of guessing that the team sheet came out for the game yesterday. And I was absolutely stunned at how many players that we didn't have available and that still haven't been commented on. And I read something earlier today that um, a comment that Bruce had made at some point, and it doesn't look like Dummett and Clark are going to be fit for the start of the season, which surprised me because I thought that they would. Um, so the communication across the board really poor and hosting a friendly at St James's Park where there were people available that could have recorded and streamed that game and didn't, I don't understand because other clubs are doing it. Um, and again, it's just that build up of frustration about how closed off the club is at the minute. They may be trying to do it to preserve, um, you know, a little bit of control about everything that's happening at the minute. But I think it's, again, not taken into consideration the other angle that that's viewed from. And it's that they are pushing the fans away. Um, and, you know, it's, it becomes dangerous. Now, Sav, as we're pre-recording this on Sunday, believe it or not, Mike Ashley is actually trending on Twitter for something positive. <laughs> and that is opening his wallet and splashing the cash. Or should I say, you know, unlocking the safe at St. James's Park and splashing the club's cash. But he is spending something. Um, obviously, because we're pre-recording this, these signings might have already been done by the time this goes live on Monday night. But Callum Wilson. Obviously, £20 million, bit accepted, centre forward, striker, whatever you want to call him. Somebody who can put the ball in the back of the net, which is what we've been crying out for. Um, Jamal Lewis from Watford, um, attacking left back, uh, something which a lot of people have been crying out for. And um, also, Ryan Fraser uh, could join um, Hendricks as, you know, probably two of the best free transfer deals that have been done at Newcastle in, in recent times. And potentially more in the pipeline. Um, you know, it, it's no the wonder Mike Ashley is trending for a positive reason. Um, you know, are you happy with, you know, the incomings? That's what I want to ask you. Do you know, I'm over the moon with them. I was walking around this morning, like in a state of shock. I had a little bit of a bounce in my step. I was like, finally, there's some positive sort of news coming through because it's all been really doom and gloom since sort of the takeover collapsed. And I think that would completely change the way that we play, or I would hope it would change the way that we play. You know, it, 
it's more attacking players and that's what we desperately sort of need and yeah no I think that's amazing if that happens that would be amazing yeah I mean as as, as we record this it, it, it is an if and we're, we're hoping that these deals can come off has it has it surprised you that there seems to be a change in direction between you know Mike Ashley and you know how he does business because I think the age is the one thing that surprises me the most about about Wilson. You know, this isn't the kind of striker that Mike Ashley would normally sign. He would normally want somebody who was signed, um, you know, who is 22, 23, who you could buy cheaply and sell on for a profit. This is somebody who is, you know, essentially 28, 29, um, you know, is established Premier League player who... You know, he'd probably get between 10 and 12 goals in a season in a bad team, could probably get you 20 in a good team. But this seems to be a major change in direction by Mike Ashley. Yeah, I mean, the fact that he's spending money at all is a major change in direction. Um, you know, I was quite shocked by it. Um, but then if you think, if he's trying to sell the club, he's not really going to want the club to be relegated. It will be worth less. So by, you know, properly investing in the club, um, you know, in the transfer window, maybe that is a sign that, you know, he wants the money for the club. So if he puts the, you know, in the work in now, he'll get, you know, the investment back. Mm. Do, do you think there's any, you know, suggestion that this could be other people's money? There's been a lot of rumours flying around social media that, you know, potentially this is, you know, money coming in from from the new owners. If you know, but as we know, that's still stalled. You know, as far as we all know. But you know, do, do you put much faith in that, or do you believe this is just simply Mike Ashley looking after his investment? I'd love to think it was money from new owners, but the problem is, I think Twitter as well, you get sort of, there's a lot of speculation going around, a lot of rumours going around. You know, one minute I'm thinking, oh, this could be new owners. The next minute I'm thinking, oh no, it's Mike Ashley. I don't think you can, you know, put your money anywhere on where it's come from really, because anything could be going on behind the scenes that obviously we don't hear about. Mm, okay. Kendall, I mean, same, same to you really, just about the, the activity, the transfer activity. Uh, I mean, it had been suggested as well that, you know, Matt Ritchie might make, be, you know, might be part of this Wilson deal. Um, a lot of, a lot of talk that that could still go ahead, but on a, in a set, you know, not involved in that yeah. deal, but it's, there's a lot going on, you know, which isn't normally the case this early in the transfer window at Newcastle United. No, we're always last minute scrambling for random transfers and obviously we as we know we haven't been the biggest spenders in the last couple of years. Um well until me I mean until Joe Linton really and as you say, Callum Wilson's not the type of striker that our recruitment normally want. Um so but it is nice because I'm actually surprised that we're actually trying for players that we need, that we want, rather than like what the Mike Ashley, what Lee Charlie, etc. want. It's very surprising. Um, obviously, I hope the deal comes off. I don't, as we know, Twitter is just the most conspiracy theory place ever. Um, I don't really, it's probably nothing to do with the takeover, but obviously we all can have a little bit of hope. Um, but yeah, I said, I think someone tagged us in a tweet earlier, like all of us saying like, what do you think is the reason why Mike Ashley spend money? And I said the same thing. I think it's just, it's for sustainability in the Premier League because obviously he doesn't want to miss out on money again um, for reselling the club. Um, obviously, yeah, protecting his investment again. He wants us to stay in the Premier League, which is, well, that's what it looks like, um, which is massively surprising again because normally he's quite happy to just let us be a yo-yo club and battle for Brumman relegation every year. But, um, yeah, just hopefully we the signings come off. Um, obviously, I know the bid's been made official for Callum Wilson today, so fingers crossed that comes off, leads into Fraser signing as well. Um, and then Jamal Lewis, and I think we can't, well, I want to say this slightly, but we can't really complain then. Yeah, I mean, we, we always do. I mean, Rob Holden's another possible from Arsenal. Yeah. Um, I, I also feel you always get judged on transfer windows by the people that leave. And of course, we know this transfer window is obviously going to be open until uh, the second week in October. Um, and, you know, you just got to hope that we don't lose the likes of Alan St. Maximin. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's literally the only thing that we, I'm worrying about now is obviously losing people like St. Maximin um, because you'd think that just the way Mike Ashley's mind works and what we've seen in the last 10 plus years is that he likes to recoup the money that he spends. Um, so I'm just hoping it's not in his like sort of 
plans to recoup some of the money that he's spending now, the 30 mil plus, um, for St. Maximin. So if we can keep him, um, and obviously we get the likes of Wilson, Fraser, like our front lines next year could be like a lot better than what we've seen in a long time. So yeah, just I'm just hoping because you know what he's like, he always finds a way to ruin the good, like, the good vibes. It's always something that happens. We can't be happy for too long. No, you're right there. Samantha, the, um, the, the thing that's getting also bandied around on Twitter is that, uh, you know, we're signing players from, from teams that were relegated, yeah, you know, and, as if that's a bad thing. But, I mean, these are good players, you know, they're, they're established players in the Premier League, they're homegrown players, which, again, is, is, is quite unique for Newcastle and transfer windows. You know, we're getting something, something you know, uh, somebody who's been capped for England, we're getting Irish internationals. So, it's, it's, for me, it's a positive. I think it's a positive window. As I say, we, we will be judged on who we end up losing I wouldn't like to lose Richie I still think we should hold on to him I wouldn't want to lose St Maximum certainly wouldn't want to lose Dubravka despite him being injured at the moment but you know, what's your take on that do you, do you feel that um, do you feel that relegated players you know are you know are no good we shouldn't be targeting those kind of players or do you think it's do you think it's the right move I think it's the right move I mean they were bad teams, not just in individually bad players. You know, Jamal Lewis, Liverpool wanted them, didn't quite want to pay the money. You've got, um, I think it's Ducure from, from Watford's just got a big move. These players are quality players that are getting good moves. If you look at Bournemouth and Norwich, for example, you know, they stuck to a style of play that they, it didn't work for them in the end. Um, you know, Bournemouth played good football. Um, for a few seasons and then last season they had injuries and it just unraveled. Norwich play a brand of football they did in the championship when they come up and they, they decided that they were not going to change that brand even if it meant that they went down again. So I think they're good players. I think we were relegated not that long ago and a lot of those players are still in our club and being picked in our first team. So I think it would be a little bit ridiculous if we were to then look at these players and think, well, why would we sign someone that's been relegated? How many of our team have been relegated and are still there? Um, so I'm pretty impressed with the business that we've done. I think the thing that um, people kind of forget is that although we're a badly run club in terms of, you know, the way that we see it, interaction with fans and, you know, all the decision making, we're financially a very stable club and we turn profit. <laughs> so the club has money. Um, it's not always Mike putting money in. The club has money because of the way that he runs it. Um, we haven't published our end of season accounts and I, I believe that they're delayed longer than they actually are allowed to be delayed. And I'm pretty certain they're going to show a set of figures that are really positive for the club but will again ask questions of the austerity that we have faced in terms of the shape of our squad plus the fact that we have staff on furlough um, and we use that scheme so for me this money has been available to spend um, and it's only right that it's being spent now and um, you know there's a lot of conversation about different wages and stuff you know what that doesn't really filter into my thinking what surprises me is we're bringing players in before we've moved players out. We never do that. It very much is a case of, well, if you want to get three players in, you need to get three players out. And we know that we have dead within the squad that we cannot get anyone to take off our hands. And it looks like for the first time, they're just being discounted. And, and Ashley and whoever else has said, go and get the targets that you want. We'll worry about that afterwards. Um, and I think for me, that's the biggest shift in policy. Is there a chance that we will lose someone towards the end of the transfer window? I had a chat with Dave, who was on the international show, and he actually brought up a point that he, he's worried that maybe Alan St Maximum might not last. What if we don't make a good start to the season? Um, and they're still discontent. Could Mike be tempted to cash in? Who knows? I don't think he will. But um, there is still that little bit of doubt. 
Do you feel that Steve Bruce's relationship with Mike Ashley, which Mike Ashley, of course, made a you know a big deal about when he appointed him as manager, has has played its part? I mean, you know, I think as you see on the international show, I think um, it was mentioned, um, you know, that the re- the relationship between um, Bruce Bruce and Ashley was is quite good. Do you think that's played its part in in maybe a, a relaxation of transfer rules that Mike Ashley set out? Absolutely. I mean, I could see Steve Bruce in another lifetime managing a Sports Direct store and being a good pal of Mike Ashley. I just think he's his kind of person. You look at his relationship with Alan Pardew and John Carver and Steve McLaren, all of these people that really make my skin crawl are Mike Ashley's kind of people. The people that we thought were actual thorough football people, the Rafa Benitez, he didn't like. He didn't want to be told what to do. He didn't want opinions that didn't follow his own. You know, I'm not saying, I think Steve Bruce is a a decent coach, a nice guy, puts your arm around your shoulder. Do I think he could lead us into the top six? Absolutely not. Um, And I, I, I would hope that, you know, any owner that came in with a little bit more about them would say, job well done, off you go. Yeah, are you happy with the players that, that that you know have been linked? I mean, as I say, because we're pre-recording this, we may have signed a couple by you know by the end of Monday evening. But are you are you happy with the the likes of Callum Wilson, Ryan Fraser, and uh, you know the, you know the Hendricks and Lewis of this world? Fantastic signings, absolutely what we need. Premier League experience. We've rolled the the dice so many times on continental players and different age brackets. This is what we need for now. Um, very excited about Jamal Lewis because you know we haven't had a proper attacking left back in a long time. We've got someone that will you know lead the line. Um, so I think they're all really good. And I was a bit critical about the Rob Holding deal when it first came on the table because I thought that's not what we need to be going for first. I actually think he'll be a good signing if we bring him in on loan because we do need competition at centre back and our defence have been shocking in pre-season um, so as long as the deals are done in the right area I think it's good in the right order sorry I, I think it's good business and I do think it brings a lot of experience in the squad that we're lacking Okay, Sav, we, uh, we've got the cup draw in today, of course. Uh, two rounds being drawn in the Carabao Cup which is of course the League Cup which has had that many names uh, you lose track but yeah, Blackburn Rovers at home um, Academic really will not be able to go and see it, but at Blackburn Rovers at home in the first, in, in the second round, sorry, and then in the third round, obviously, which has uh, already been drawn as well, um, we could face either Morecambe or Oldham Athletic away. So, you know, Steve Bruce had a, a decent run in the FA Cup last year. Would you like to see, you know, Bruce give the Carabao Cup a bit of a go this year, or is the league the priority for you? You know, it's always nice to go and give the cup a good go. You know, the FA Cup, I don't I don't know what on earth happened in our last game. I mean, we went out there, we knew we were going to lose and we lost it. You know, we were nowhere. Um, I mean, the league is the priority, but it'd be, lo- it'd be great to see, you know, Steve give a cup a go. I mean, we've had no silverware for forever, so it would be great to have something to brag about. I highly doubt it, but it would be nice. <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's it's always nice to have a cup run, and um, you know it, it it as you say the league has to be the priority, and I'm sure that will be the case for Steve Bruce. But uh, Carabao Cup's the one you can win. It's the one when you look at the list of names of teams that have even just been to the final, um, and, and Newcastle haven't been there since 1976. It would be nice to get that kind of momentum going with 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 two early wins in that competition, wouldn't it? Oh, it'd be great, and uh, it would raise morale and sort of you know the positivity around it, but. You know, I would like to think that we could win those. We should, on paper, we should win those. But it just depends if our, you know, the way we, the squad set up changes and, you know, our style of play changes because we can't just show up to these matches and sit with 10 at the back just defending the goal because we're never going to get anywhere. Yeah. Kendall, I mean, we've lost all three of our League Cup ties um, since defeating Cheltenham Town at St James's Park back in the season of August 2016. Um, I think we're currently in our worst run of form in the competition since the 1980s. So, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not a great omen, but would you like to see a cup run? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we are, like, infamously notorious for, like, losing to 
a lot lower league teams than us in cups like that. I said this year, like, wait, sorry, last season, and that the FA Cup run that we had, we would never get another chance at an FA Cup run like that, like, in my opinion. Um, and obviously to lose the way we did against Man City was just the most annoying way to go out of a cup ever. Um, obviously, we went in, a whole, like, not expecting anything, but, I mean, to lose 2-1 was just a bit of a... After a shower, I had a little bit of a nightmare. Um, but yeah, I would love to see us like going for the cup. Um, obviously, as we all know, the league is massively important to us this year. It's a, it's a big telling sign this year, the league, um, of what's going to happen. With these new signings, though, who knows? Obviously, when we didn't have no signings, we didn't have anyone in sort of our sights, then the league was the most important because obviously, as we said, we were going to get relegated and everyone thought that we were probably going to be fighting it again this year. Um, so if these new signings come in and the squad depth gets a little bit better, who knows? I would love it. I think um, it would probably, as we all know, a lot of fans rated Steve Bruce last year for trying in the cup because pre a lot of previous managers haven't really tried to you know, attack the cup in any way. So it was nice to see that. It was refreshing. Um, so, yeah, it would be lovely to see it again. Um, and obviously the first two fixtures on paper, as Sav says, looks like they're in our favour. But, yeah, we're infamously bad at playing <laughs> league teams. And we always make it harder than it is. But, yeah, I'd love to see it. Samantha, same question to you. Cup run, would you like to see one in the Carabao Cup? Yeah, any cup, any time. I mean, it looks like we're trying to to get better squad depths, which gives us better options. If we can sort out the injuries and the conditioning, yes. I mean, you talk about Richie, for example, I wouldn't see him as a starter anymore if he does stay. But I mean, he's a guy you would want starting in the cup. Paul Dummett, you know, might not be a starter anymore with his injuries. You want players like that starting in the cup, Andy Carroll, um, etc. So we might actually have the depth to be able to have good, strong personalities take our team on a cup run. The draw needs to be kind. Um, and Steve Bruce, you know, I, I've said it time and time again, and I mean it in every game this season, he really needs to set the team up properly and he needs to give them the confidence to go out and play the way that he wants them to. The most frustrating thing about the FA Cup run, as the girls have said, was what we did against Man City. I screamed, I shouted, I couldn't believe that he let us down so badly by playing, you know, every single person behind the ball. As soon as I saw we set up with, you know, the three at the back and the two wing backs, I just thought, right, we're done. And that was an hour before the game started. Because we can all see the statistics of how we play. The players know that as well. So he needs to stand up and really get behind the players and push them to play a brand of football that he wants. He said that, you know, it was difficult last season because he didn't really have time to prep them. I'm absolutely expecting a better brand of football and four at the back in every game that we play this season. He's going to be giving the players to do it. This is going to be testament to whether he is actually a good manager, head coach, is his ability to stick to his principles and get the team to play the way and not shirk that. And, you know, you don't have confidence whenever they start, you know, a manager starts making changes, which is going against the grain. Um, so if he does all of that, we're not asking for too much. I think we have an opportunity, more so this season than others. Yeah, good points. Last 10 minutes uh, of this particular show. Uh, just want to look ahead to the, the West Ham game, Sav, and uh, want to know, you know, what, what do you think Steve Bruce will do? How do you think he'll set up next week? Have you got an idea of what team or formation he's going to play? You know, I have no idea. I just hope it's not the teams and formations that he's been playing in these pre-season friendlies. You know, I think that it seems that he plays a certain style of football. I mean, these new players coming in, will, I, you know, I said earlier, I hope that will just change everything because if we turn up playing like we've been playing in the pre-season friendlies, then, you know, we've got no chance. It has got to be changed. And hopefully these new players, if they come along, will change that. Yeah, Kendall, same question to you, really. The, the the formation that Steve Bruce has been adapting in the friendlies. What what are you what are you looking at? Uh, you know, for for the West Ham game. Do you think he'll go on the offensive? Do you think he'll sit back? What what are you expecting? Um, I honestly don't know because obviously, as we know, the sides ravaged with injuries at the moment. Um, I think it all probably 
depends on what happens in the next few days with signings because if we go into our first game against West Ham with an attack of Andy Carroll and Joe Linton, then I'm probably just going to like lose my head before the game even starts. If he starts with a back five, I'm not even, oh, I'm just going to leave the season then I'm gone. <laughs> like, I'm just not going to watch the rest of the season because I cannot deal. Like, just start just start with a back four, like what was working, that I started working. Um, as Sam says, get some tactics established, get a fo proper formation like established. Um, and hopefully, because West Ham to us, they're like on a similar level to us. So it would be nice to see us attack the game and start the season off on the best foot. But obviously, as we know, we have got injuries. Um, hopefully we get signings in the next few days so that we've got them ready to, you know, be integrated into the squad for the first couple of fixtures because they're important to see how the season's going to pan out. Um, but yeah, I really just hope that he takes the positives, the very minimal positives from last season and takes them forward and tries to grow from that. Man, there obviously a lot depends on on players coming in. We we know that you know the, the need to adapt and, and and get used to playing with their teammates. You would expect if Callum Wilson comes in that he would be a starter, though. Twenty million pound striker, somebody who's used to playing in the Premier League. But uh, as as of as of tonight, Sunday night when we're we're recording this, he hasn't put pen to paper yet. Um, but yeah, I mean, how do you see Steve Bruce setting up? Um, you know, for this West Ham game and and moving forward. I think it'll play four at the back. It's really interesting because West Ham are in a little bit of a crisis themselves, selling players, fans on the back, captain coming out and making a statement, which I love to see. There's whispers that Antonio's not going to be fit for it. So all of those things help, but we don't need to worry about West Ham. We need to worry about ourselves. Currently, we don't have a starting left back, so we really need to push to get Jamal Lewis in or Rodrigo, you know, whoever it is. Um, I think, you know, we're going to play the 4-2-3-1. I actually don't think if we get Wilson in, he'll start. I think he'll start Andy Carroll. Um, and I think he'll kind of... I'm, I'm not sure if he'll start Jacob Murphy or not, but um, I think it'll be pretty similar with Hayden and Shelby in the centre, um, Miggy in number 10 and uh, St Maxim on one of the wings. But it really just depends who's fit. I'm more nervous about the back four. I hope that Lascelles is fit and ready because without Dubravka, we need somebody marshalling the defence with Fernandez. Um, and I think for me, Lascelles really needs to step it up this season. I don't think he was good enough last season, um, especially as a leader on the pitch. I think he really needs to up his game. Um, right back is a very sensitive area as well. So, um, you know, I think he'll play the four at the back he just he needs to be positive they need to be responsible but we really need to get a foothold on the game and um, because I think there could be a win there but I'm at least expecting you know a 2-2 draw okay go for predictions as well uh Sav give us your prediction for the for the weekend's game against West Ham I reckon nil nil I think it's just going to be if we carry on playing like we are I think it's just going to be one of those usual Newcastle games where it's all a bit boring. We all fall asleep midway and, you know, nil-nil, I think. OK, Kendall, what's your prediction for the game of the weekend? Well, when we play West Ham, we always seem to get a draw, but it's always like 3-3 three, three or whatever. So, I, to be honest, I would have agreed with Sam. I would have said about probably 2-2. Two, two. But then I look and I think, God, we probably don't even have anyone who can score a goal because Andy Carroll didn't score, like, at all. <laughs> season so maybe 2-2 two is being um, a bit optimistic so I'll go 1-1, one, 1-1 one. One, one draw You're going 1-1 one, one. and let's talk yeah. about the season let's finish off, where do you see Newcastle United finishing this season Sav? It depends how our tactics change, you know what, I'd love to get in the top 10, I think you know that may be me sort of hopefully wishing but I would like to think that you know things could change up and you know if, if we could just lift out that 13th, 14th place you know anything's an improvement from then I mean, if a takeover goes through, you know, the possibilities are endless. I just hope that we don't get relegated. I mean, I said, you asked me this a couple of weeks ago, and I think I said that, you know, we was going to be struggling with relegation and things. After the news the past couple of days, I'm sort of slightly thinking that that might not happen. OK, good. Kendall, what about you? Where do you see Newcastle United finishing this season? You know, it's a dire reflection of everything that's been going on in the past few months, past few years, because I would be overjoyed with 10th like 
10th for me would be like such a progression and I'd be so happy with that up because of the last season and everything that's gone on. Um, but, well, as we all know, and it, as we keep saying, depending on signings, um, I see us probably mid-bottom mid -bottom half of the table again, 12th, 13th, 14th. If we get the signings, hopefully we can sort of push for 10th. But yeah, I think we're struggling once again. Um, so I just hope I'm wrong. <laughs> I hope he proves me wrong. Samantha? Uh, give us your prediction. Where do you see Newcastle United finishing this season? I think with the signings that it looks like we're going to make, injuries dependent. And if he does kind of, you know, stand up and, and get us playing a bit of positive football, I think we'll finish 12th. I think um, we'll see in the first couple of games how he sets up. But if we get those players um, and he gives them a real sense of direction and what he wants them to do, then I would say, you know, 12th, pushing the top 10. But, you know, I, I think those signings, those potential signings have kind of allayed my fears of relegation. Great stuff. Always a pleasure to speak to you, ladies. Apologies to everybody with it not being live. We'll be back uh, to normal service next week to discuss the, uh, the West Ham game. But for now, Sav, Kendall and Samantha, thanks very much for your time. Good night. Bye. Bye.